Janae Harding, welcome to MMA Live TV. How's it going? Good, thank you. How are you? Not too bad, not too bad. Janae, we're recording on a Friday afternoon. What's a, what's a Friday afternoon like for a, for a professional fighter? Like, what's the plans for the rest of the night? <laughs> well, I just finished training. Um, I get like a late afternoon training, which is pretty good. And I, I trained, I just had a bit of a run in the morning, so nothing too strenuous. And then, yeah, just going to jiu-jitsu probably about 8 p.m. So it's kind of like a late one. Um, yeah. But that's all right. We've got a big weekend ahead. Fair enough. Is this is this what the weekends or Fridays usually look like for you? Yeah, generally that 3 p.m. session is pretty staple. And then it just depends how I'm feeling, how the body's feeling. I never want to push myself too hard on the Friday, especially because um, Saturday's a um, aspiring day and it's like the important rounds that I really want to prioritize. So so I just kind of um, take it by ear and, and usually at least do the jujitsu side of things. Yeah, got you. So yeah, we'll, we'll talk about like obviously king's king's uh, academy and how you got into there but you're predominantly like a striker is jiu-jitsu something that you've uh, is it is it relatively new to you or like how is that it's it's not necessarily new it's just been a bit more of a up and down journey with jiu-jitsu i find it so much easier to um to learn striking and understand striking and i kind of progress in striking a lot easier whereas um jiu-jitsu has been more of like a love hate so it's sort of just something that I've really had to take the time um, to put my effort into. And I, I think like the good thing about Kings is that it's the best environment for me to learn. Yeah. Um, it's not intimidating. It makes me want to go to the gym and want to do jiu-jitsu and roll with um, all these high level girls. And it really makes a big difference. Awesome. Awesome. And, and tell us, how did you get into MMA? How did you get into mixed martial arts? Yeah, originally um, I did karate. Um, I did a lot of hobbies as a kid, but then I ended up in karate, so it kind of just sort of progressed from there. Um, I didn't really know what MMA was, to be honest, and it wasn't like I really wanted to be a fighter from the get-go. Um, but I just found a gym. Um, my mom and I found a gym. We started when I was about 15, and, and then it kind of just progressed from there after I finished high school and stopped doing it as a hobby. I did it more as like a sport, and um, it just became my life. And, and from there on in, it was sort of what I wanted to do after I had my first fight. Gotcha. So what was that turning point where you thought that, hey, this is, I like doing it, uh, but I could actually do it as a career. I could, I could make some money out of it. Yeah. Um, I, we had, like, there was a bit of a downtime after I graduated high school. I kind of had to, you know, get my independence back, start a full-time job, get a car and that kind of thing. And um, I think uh, once I'd done that, I, I went back to training full-time and, and just because it was just something to do, I guess, and, and it was what I love to do. So I was like, I might as well start adding on more sessions and taking it more seriously. And then um, we had a guest coach coach in um, called Mark Fiore, and he basically just asked me, you either want to do this as a hobby or a career? And I just kind of had never been asked that question or even thought about that question myself. And then um, just being competitive by nature, I just sort of was like, well, of course, like I'd love to make a career out of this if I could, but I never really thought it was justifiable especially because you a woman went in the ufc and i didn't really know what i could make of it and then i guess we were just like well we at least have to start with that first fight and then i did really well and i guess i i loved it and i, I performed under pressure and so we just kind of went from there and it just kept evolving and and is where it is now awesome and and tell me because you're from a kiwi maori background right how did that how did that chat with mom go <laughs> yeah it was good like I mean, we moved over here when I was 10, so we have been here for a little while, um, but she's on the Gold Coast, so I'm in Sydney, and I have done a lot of traveling and that kind of thing, and so it has separated us, but at the same time, she's always supported me, um, especially even back when I was fighting locally, and, and she supported my choice of becoming a fighter, and, and she knew that I guess as long as I'm putting 100% into it and it was making me happy, then, then she would support me no matter what. Gotcha. Uh, how did you get the call up into Bellator? Like, how did that all evolve? Um, I think I was on the contender series. Well, I was meant to be on the contender series. I was working towards that. Um, and then unfortunately my visa didn't go through. It was taking a little bit more time than expected. Um, I think that really threw my name in the mix and it kind of got my name a little bit out there because I was matched up and it was literally only like the week before that the fight fell through. So, um, it was a bit of a bummer, but at the same time, I just kind of started pushing my social media and um, and I guess keeping the momentum going of, of what I'd already done. And I think 
um, from there, they, they reached out to my manager and it just sort of went from there. I'm not really sure how they heard of me exactly, but I'm assuming it was just like a mix of already being in the mix and then me pushing it myself. And, and then once my manager kind of called me, we just worked on the contract and then went from there. Gotcha. And you've often talked about like your brand and how to build this. I think it's interesting because I've chatted with a couple of fighters and you have this finite period of time when you can really capitalize financially. How how, how do you go about that, that whole aspect of self-promotion and, and, and building yourself as a brand? I think um, I'm like a little bit of an opportunist. I really try to jump on whatever I can. Um, I'm very specific in how I represent my brand. So I kind of make sure like it, represents me as who I am and and it's very like true to the person that I want to be and like try to be um and therefore I think like I would just say like just stick to whatever you know like it doesn't have to be you don't have to have the perfect Instagram or whatever it is but you just kind of have to take opportunities as they come adapt to like these new um abilities especially like with COVID and everything we're all changing kind of like how we can we can't do say like massive TED talks or something, but we can obviously connect online and, and in different ways. So I think it's just sort of like finding different avenues, things that you're good at, things that you're already passionate about. So you're happy to put the effort into, and then, and then just working from there. Gotcha. And if you were to explain to someone the Janae Harding brand, how would you articulate it? Um, I would say that it's probably just, I guess, genuine to me. I, I don't, try to sexualize myself I guess I try to keep it as authentic as possible I just try to represent um what I think MMA should be and empowering I guess the gender stereotype and, um and challenging it as much as possible it's just sort of like it's me it's who I am I'm, I'm just a like a a Maori girl that lives in Australia that represents this side of the the world and um I guess I just sort of try to find a balance between um, the thing that I love and the thing that I'm passionate about and I do for a living and um, and just like a general normal personal life. And, and I guess it's just sort of translating that through things like social media is just, yeah, me kind of being me. Yep. And and speaking to, to gender stereotypes, when you explain to, to people that maybe are not into mixed martial arts or fighting that you're a female fighter, like what are some of the challenges, if, if at all, that you've kind of faced in in, in in that element i feel like the general reaction every time you kind of say like i fight professionally or i'm a mixed martial artist or professional athlete or whatever it is you say to the person um it's usually like oh what got you into that like why why would you do that and so so strange in a sense whereas like a lot of the times if men get asked that same questions and they answer um they they don't really get asked why they got into it just sort of like is normalized in a sense um and it's not as much of a surprise so it's just sort of like working through that usually when i have a conversation with someone though like once they kind of get to know me get to understand my perspective on mma and 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 how passionate i really am about it they kind of see that oh this isn't about the um violent side of it it's more about the general athleticism and the game of MMA, it's, it's a lot more than just some sort of like punching each other and getting cuts and bruises. And it's, um, it's a little bit more than that. I think once I do have a conversation with people, they can see like, it's, it's a real sport that's extremely like complicated and, and extremely hard to get through. So, so you kind of have to be passionate. And, and for that reason, they kind of change their mind about, I guess, me being a girl and more me being an athlete, if that makes sense. No, it absolutely does make sense. And talking to a lot of fighters, um, it's hard because e- even though you kind of want to disconnect it, violence is a-, a part of the sport. How do you approach that aspect of it when you go into a fight? Yeah, it's it's sort of like, I guess, especially with for a very long time, you almost get used to the idea that you're going to get bumps and bruises. You're probably going to, it's going to hurt a little bit. Yeah. Um, but it's less about that and more about winning, I guess. It's more about winning and losing, more about points and and kind of – and your game plan and, and all the stuff that's riding on the performances. Um, it really kind of, I guess, takes away from the, the pain of it. It's really, You kind of don't see it as that anymore and you sort of just go towards the idea that you have to win and the more, you, more strikes you get off is better for you rather than getting hit. And, like, every time you get hit in a fight, I'm sort of just like, oh, I'm stressing that that I'm down on points rather yeah. than it hurting. Um, because 
of course it's uncomfortable and I mean especially like the groundwork and stuff is probably more uncomfortable than getting punched on the feet um and and like knockouts and stuff are scary Mm. um especially for yeah brain damage and longevity but but it yeah it really is more about to me points and winning rather than um yeah pain and bumps and bruises understood understood and then how do you approach the craft of fighting on your on your end like is it a constant evolution or or how, how do you look at it yeah especially in mma i think um it really is a constant evolution because it is always evolving and people are finding new ways to win and there's like uh, infinite questions and infinite infinite solutions to those questions um when it comes to the fighting game so it's sort of like just because maybe like a grappler v striker there's like basic ways that you obviously want to deter away from the takedown or whatever it is there's more to that there's levels and it just constantly evolves new ways and new reasons to avoid the takedowns or whatever it is and i guess for me it's just kind of like evolving with the sport and making sure i'm just constantly keeping my mind as active as possible on these different possibilities and and making um new progressions in different disciplines to to sort of combine them in the best way possible and take new things from different areas yeah no definitely definitely can get that aspect We've seen it a lot in, in, in the men's game with like a lot of the Australian guys really making a stamp and a really strong stamp out in the world. I think it's the same thing with the, the, the women's game. Like we've got obviously like Megan Anderson fighting and you've actually fought a, a lot of these Australian girls, right? Uh, Arlene is, is fighting Cyborg, right? For, for, for a shot there. When you look back at your career so far, what would you say is your most memorable fight and why? Um, I think my most memorable, um, funnily enough, would, would be Ramona Carla in, in Hong Kong. Yeah. Um, just because it was like, I had, I had just lost to Arlene. I had taken that up on short notice and I had obviously was a lot less experienced than her and that kind of thing. Um, the getting knocked out was like a big, not shock, but it was just a big setback for me mentally. I was just sort of like, man, You really need to make the decision if you want to keep doing this. You don't want to be a journeyman. You don't want to keep getting knocked out and you don't want to keep losing. So Mm. you need to make the decision of what you're going to do. And I made the dramatic change to to move over to Thailand. And um, I guess like it was only maybe like two, like three weeks, I think, after I got there that I fought Ramona in Hong Kong. And that was my first international fight. It was a big deal. I went over by myself. Um, The weight cut was a bit of a hassle just because I was in a foreign country and um, it was a public holiday and everything was closed and it was all like, I was, and I had a scooter accident like the week before. It was just hurdle after hurdle after hurdle. And mm-hmm. it was a lot of independent kind of um, things that I had to overcome. And I really proved to myself that I could, I could go over there by myself. Um, I was lucky enough to meet um, one of the coaches from Jab in Hong Kong, um, who was also a Kiwi and he cornered me, but he literally met me that day. Yeah. Um, so it was sort of like us just, you know, figuring it out and him just helping me wrap my hands and stuff. So it was really all on me. And I think for that reason, it's going to like be something that will stay with me for a long time. Just knowing that I had that in me. Um, I came off the scooter. I had hardly done any jujitsu because I had all these open wounds on my arm. So I didn't want to get staff and, and have to pull out. And, um, and and I pulled through and I came away with a win and, and it was really rewarding. Yeah. That, that journey into Thailand, from it looking back, do you think it was a lot of uh, technical e- evolution or growth from your end or mental? Like of, of the two elements, where do you think you really grew from that experience? Mental. Um, I mean, I, I love the facilities and the training there and it's obviously a great lifestyle, but um, I went over there to obviously sort of isolate myself to training like just training not have to work full time and not have to um constantly be worried about bills and and things like that i just went over with some money and and i just wanted to live the island life and and really spend time on my mindset and my mindfulness so i want to spend more time reading more time writing and and trying to blog and that kind of thing and traveling really gave me my own sort of i feel like i really a lot of people say this and it's very cliche, but you kind of like learn who you are when you travel. And, um, and once you get to like get involved in different cultures and go to different countries and see different things, it, it opens your eyes to more stuff. And, and it kind of just showed myself that I am that independent and competent person that can kind of travel by themselves and, and, um, and do a whole lot of stuff that I, I had really no experience in doing, but kind of pulled off and kind of just cruised by. And it really worked out for me. And that, that, 
kind of ended up paying dividends and, and working leaps and bounds and how I felt mentally um, in the fight game and, and how I belong to be here. Gotcha. And in your mind, do you see in the future you doing something similar like that? Maybe not necessarily Thailand, but a, a different country? Yeah, possibly. I mean, I, the cool thing about have, having done it is that I can kind of be, it's hard with COVID obviously right now, but I can kind of be in that mindset that, you know, tomorrow's a new day or, or next week's a new week. And um, you never know, like I could be jetting to the US or something next week or whatever opportunities come. Like at the start of the year, I headed to the Philippines for a couple of weeks and that was fantastic. It was a great opportunity and just being kind of ready for these different opportunities and different ideas that I could yeah pick up and move or even just just be in a different country for a couple of months at a time um, I'm completely open to that kind of thing and, and if the opportunity fits with what I want and, and my kind of um, goals at the moment then then it will be great yep so what are your goals at the moment if you were to articulate it yeah obviously it's to to fight as much as possible um, especially with the big COVID break um, and being matched up I've been matched up like three times this year and um they've kind of fallen through for different reasons obviously COVID and the visas and that kind of thing mainly just that um and so now I'm hoping to fight soon um everything's sort of like waiting and hearing but um I'm hoping to fight soon and then of course just keeping working towards that world championship gold um the Bellator belt and then hopefully um whether it's winning the featherweight championship in the UFC as well or um winning the bantamweight division if they bring in bantamweights and bellator these are all the things that i want to check off my list and as well as um increasing my presence um my social media and and that kind of thing and and keep working on these new opportunities that i have been kind of working with um with new brands and and in like cinematography and stuff so so yeah just just kind of growing i guess as a whole and in all avenues of my life gotcha you've gravitated a lot and transition in and out to like boxing and MMA is that uh is that a conscious thing or is it that an opportunity thing like how did that come about yeah I guess at the start it was yeah more of an opportunity thing um it was sort of like I wasn't getting a lot of MMA fights um as you can kind of see from my journey I was just fighting whoever I could mm. and then it ended up being obviously people that were a lot more experienced than me but um I was also having these long layoffs like 12 months at a time and so for that reason, um, a professional boxing fight opportunity came up. I took that opportunity, and then I guess from there, once my name was in the mix, it just ended up being like again and again, and 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 I ended up getting all these different sort of girls, I guess, because there's not many girls, especially at this higher weight. Um, I ended up, yeah, fighting a whole lot of people, and it was just sort of like at the start of the journey, I really didn't understand boxing at all, um, and then now I feel like I'm like a completely different person when it comes to boxing. I almost understand boxing more than I understand MMA sometimes um, when I'm sparring. And it's just sort of like, it's taken me that journey, but it's also progressed my striking so much. And it's been super beneficial in just learning and understanding the discipline itself. And, and it, it sort of wasn't planned, but it all kind of ended up and I got to do some cool stuff. So so yeah, here I am now with much better hands and, and a little bit of um, extra ring time behind me. Awesome. Uh, speaking of ring time, tell us about how you how you found Kings during during this COVID environment. Yeah, oh, like out of everything with COVID, Kings is definitely the best thing to come out of it. Um, it's been obviously an up and down year for everyone, and um, a few of my gyms, or well, one of my gym was closed for a very long time, and then my boxing gym closed um, shortly after, and then um, my boxing gym has now closed indefinitely um, until maybe they move or, or open. Um, up again later down the track and then um, I just sort of like felt like I was gravitating away from my jiu-jitsu gym um, and my strength and conditioning gym so everything was just like moving a lot there was a lot of change going on and then kind of out of nowhere um, I was trying to train with some more girls in like Penrith and then I met Olivia um, just through like her coming to these sessions and then um, I started to come to Kings on a Saturday just for for sparring and yeah. then um from there i was just like no i want to stay here like this is fantastic facilities this is such a great team um these people are definitely my vibe it really emulated kind of what i used to know back when i first started my journey at my original gym on the gold coast um with vincent perry and Vinny is quite good friends with elvis or knows Elvis, especially from the game so it just sort of all worked mm -hmm. in and i was like yeah this is definitely where i want to be and i'm so glad that i have those guys and renato 
um, Subicic, I don't know how to say his last name actually, um, <laughs> something like that, something. Yeah. Um, um, what is he like? I can't remember what he is, but he's Italian and Serbian, that's it. It's like Serbian last name, but yeah. Yep. Um, and having those guys at the UFC Jim Rockdale has just been so, so good to sort of help me progress consistently and have some really good people behind me. Awesome. Yeah, it, it's it's a great place. I've only started this year because of COVID too. So it's an, it's an interesting journey, but yeah, I love it. I love it. Uh, how close would you say you are with the Australian like fighting uh, fraternity? Like, do you, do, you keep, do you keep contact with some of the girls? Like, for example, Arlene that, you, that you've kind of fought? Like, uh, what, what is that sort of relationship like, if at all? Yeah, definitely um, keep in contact with Arlene. The cool thing was that we were sort of friends before we yeah. um, fought each other. And, I mean, the crazy thing was that she was matched up to fight on that fight card on the Gold Coast. And um, we were, I was like, yeah, I'll pick you up from the airport. And I was like, if your partner needs to be picked up as well because he was on a different flight, I was like, organized to get your hair done, no problem. Like, you're coming to my hometown. Like, I'll look after you. And then um, her opponent was originally from Brazil and – um, she ended up pulling out because of visa issues. And so obviously I took up the fight and it just changed a little bit, but we were still, you know, laughing literally out the back of rehearsals and stuff the day before we fought and, and we're still friends now. It's just good to kind of keep that relationship. Obviously it's super beneficial for me to have someone like her to not only look up to during my journey, but now I'm in the same city as her i get to train with her and i get to kind of follow her around wherever i can to get some rounds in to get some work in um if i can and, and it's just it's just good for me to sort of have that connection and, and she's obviously such a inspirational person to sort of look up to especially her work ethic is just second to none so so having someone around like that has been really really cool awesome yeah no it that definitely makes sense having, having people that are in the same industry going through the same challenges kind of helps that you've fought them as well. <laughs> like yeah, yeah the, you, you you you've shared you've sh you've shared experiences well th well thanks Janae we really appreciate your time and we, we wish you success in your future to end it off uh we'll end off at a bit of a light-hearted uh moment like what are three songs that are banging in your playlist at the moment that's a good one why do all fighters like get stumped on this one like surely oh. you guys are training to music three like three. Oh, give me one sure just, just spit um. it out Masego Tado is yep. like definitely pumping um that and that whole album to be honest. Yep. Yep. Um the new newish six sixty, um it was it came out earlier this year, I think it was. Um like I don't think it's like a full album, but it's a mixtape of some sort. Um uh what's my favorite from there? Like I don't even know. There's so many good ones, but probably just that whole playlist because I play it together. Yep. And then one other one would be um, Matoma, Old Thing Back. That's always like, I think I've been listening to that for years and years, but it never gets old and it's always good vibe. Yep. What about if, if you're going to the gym, you, you're going to do a, a session on the, on the bags, like what are you listening to usually? Probably just like a mix of random stuff. Honestly, when people hear my playlist, they're just like, how do you work out to this? Like, this is not <laughs> hyped up. And it's like, like Masego and stuff. They're just a little bit more relaxed. And it's just more like rhythm and movement and stuff. But like, I'm more into chilled out stuff. So I guess like, I like Addy Sully Solomon, I think his, his name is. Um, he's pretty chill. And then, um, and then I guess just some pumped up stuff. There was like that, um, it was off uh, Birds of Prey, that movie that where, um, Harley Quinn is. It was. It's, I think it's called Sway, and it's got Saweetie in it, and um, yeah. that's all right too. But I don't like the WAP song, and I know it's <laughs> not a popular opinion, but I don't like it. <laughs> it's that's not it. <laughs> it is what it is. All right, Janae. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much.